Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Again, we thank you for joining us this morning for our morning worship here at Poplar Spring Missionary Baptist Church, located at 290 Springdale Drive, Simpsonville, South Carolina. Again, truly, we thank you. We ask that you come in, invite someone, invite someone, and uh, start inviting folks on your Facebook, uh, or even visit us on our live stream, or uh, connect with us on our prayer line as we prepare to go and worship. If you know that God is good and God is mighty and God is marvelous, I dare you to put your hands together and tell God thank you right now. Do anybody have a thank you in your spirit this morning? Do you have a thank you in your heart? Someone ought to say, if it had not been for the Lord that was on my side, where would I be right now? When I look back over my life and I see where God has brought me from, I want to tell him thank you right now. Not just because of who he is, but I want to thank him for all that he's done for me. Somebody ought to tell him thank you this morning. Even before we wake up and rise, you ought to just tell him thank you right now. Let us pray right now. Father God, we thank you. We bless your name as we go into this morning of worship. Lord, let us put a thank you on our lips. We thank you, Father God, for upgrading us, Lord. And what I mean by that, Lord, you brought us from a mighty long way. God, you kept us from danger seen and unseen. Lord, when we didn't want to let it go, Lord, you released it out of our lives. So now, God, we just tell you thank you. And God, just for a moment, we ask that we have this opportunity to worship you in spirit and in truth. Lord, let us raise our hands and our hearts to give you the glory and the praise. And we thank you. We thank you for your son, Jesus who died on a cross, Lord, but said, if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. Lord, we need that drawing power this morning. And again, Lord, we say, now let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord. We thank you for being our strength and our redeemer. Wherever you are this morning, start praising God. Start magnifying God. Start exalting God. Start lifting his name up. Come on, come on. Set the atmosphere. Let God know that you love him. Somebody say, I love him. Yeah, yeah. It's in his name. Amen. Oh, come on and magnify the Lord with me. Hallelujah. It's another day that the Lord has allowed us to see. Hallelujah. And we want you, God, more and more. Hallelujah. We thank you.
many are grateful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You get to a point where you go to the, to the Lord. Hallelujah. And there's so many things that you need him to do for you. Hallelujah. He does those things and then there's not much that he requires from us but a simple thank you. Hallelujah. Or a grateful heart. Hallelujah. So how many are grateful? Hallelujah. For the healer that God has been. Hallelujah. 
How many are grateful for how faithful God has been? Hallelujah. And just simply for all of the things that he's done for you. Hallelujah. We stand grateful this afternoon, this morning. Hallelujah. I'm grateful for all of the things you've done. done.
see, when you know who God is in your life, you don't have to worry about nobody telling you about being grateful. And even out of the small things in life, you learn how to say, God, I'm grateful. Can I go down memory lane just for a moment? Maybe this won't touch some of y'all, but is there anybody ever been hungry in your life? But God made a way. It may not have been what you wanted, but God made a way. Has anybody ever had a problem or an issue that tried to take you out? But somebody ought to say, I'm a witness, I'm still here. Be grateful that we're living in a land where there's turmoil and the world is looking like it's upside down. But somebody ought to say, I'm still here. I'm still here. I'm still here. Tragedy in common places. All kind of diseases. But you ought to say, I'm grateful this morning. Grateful, grateful. Stop talking about what you don't have. And start thanking God for what he's doing in your life. The spirit of God of excellency is ministering in this house this morning. And I think we ought to just take a moment and just tell God we are grateful for who you are. What you're doing, Lord. You didn't have to do it, but you did it. I'm not a statistic. But I'm a witness that, that grace and mercy still works. Grateful, grateful. I'm grateful, God. The word of God said, if, if, if I had 10,000 tongues, I couldn't thank him enough. I need, to, I need the real people to come to the altar this morning. I need the real people that don't been in some stuff. I, I need the real people to come to the altar that, 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 that have, that, that understand what problems and pain mix together, how it can mess with your mind. I need some real people that, that have cried some tears and, and wanted to walk away from some things. But somebody ought to say, God step right in. And that's why I'm grateful. I'm, I'm grateful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. We're going to change the language. We're going to change the language. We're going we're gonna to change the language and we're going to start telling God, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, Clarice. Come on. I had to get that prophetic word out. Someone needed to hear that this morning. should have killed you didn't. Grateful. You thought some things that you shouldn't have, been some places you shouldn't have been. Grateful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our scripture this morning will be coming from 1 John, the second chapter. We'll be reading from the NIV version, verses 3 through 11. And it reads, We know that we have come to know him if we keep his commands. Whoever says, I know him, but does not do what he commands is a liar. And the truth is not in that person. But if anyone obeys his word, love for God is truly made complete in them. This is how we know we are in him. Whoever claims to live in him must live as Jesus did. Dear friends, 
I am not writing you a new command, but an old one, which you have had since the beginning. This old command is the message you have heard. Yet I am writing you a new command. Its truth is seen in him and in you, because the darkness is passing and the true light is already shining. Anyone who claims to be in the light but hates a brother or sister is still in the darkness. Anyone who loves their brother and sister lives in the light, and there is nothing in them to make them stumble. But anyone who hates a brother or sister is in the darkness and walks around in the darkness. They do not know where they are going because the darkness has blinded them. God's word for his people. May you be hearers and doers of his holy word. Let us pray. Father God, we come before you once again, Lord, to say thank you. We thank you, Father God, for the many blessings that you give to us each and every day. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your strength and your power. We thank you for your glory. We thank you for your anointing, Father God. We thank you for your healing. We thank you for your deliverance. Father God, we thank you because you are majestic and holy and righteous. You are everything that we need and more. And we are so grateful, Father God, that you loved us enough to send your son to die for us so that we may have the gift of eternal life. Father God, we ask right now that if there be anything that we've said or done, that you forgive us, that was anything that was not of you, Father God, forgive us. We want to walk and talk like you, Father God. We want our lights to shine so brightly, Father God, that we don't have to speak it, but people will see the God in us. We want to be compassionate for our brothers and sisters, even those that we don't agree with, Father God, because we are a brother's keeper. So we just ask, Father God, that you just have your way upon the land, Father God, that you transform us, Father God, that you heal, that you deliver, that you set free, Father God, we just ask, Father God, that you cover our leadership, our leadership of the world, Father God, our leadership of the United States, Father God. We ask that you cover each and every one of them, Father God. We ask that they be surrounded by people who are godly, that can pour into them. We ask that they have humble spirits, Father God, that, they, that you soften their heart, hearts for the people, Father God. We pray, Father God, just for your power and your glory to reign supreme, because we trust in you, Father God. We are assured, Father God, that we can have all that you say that we can have. So we thank you and we glorify you. Father God, we pray for the man servant that is going to bring forth your word, Father God. We ask that he comes forth boldly, Father God, with power, with the word that is relevant to us right now right now, Father God. And we ask that we have open hearts to receive it and to apply it. We ask all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen.
the table and they close on my back you be that you give God a praise of excellency, that you just put your hands together and tell God thank you this morning, wherever you are, and just say, God, I thank you for being so good to me. Amen. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you for being with us this morning uh, on our worship. Again, uh, those who are visiting us on various devices, we thank you again. And uh, we even thank you for how you have participated in the giving of ministry. Even though we are separated, we are still together, and you are making it possible through your giving. Uh, again, we ask that you go to our various apps, uh, and uh, if God lay it upon your heart to give in this time, we thank you. Or you can generally do as many. You can mail it in to our uh, home address here at 290 Springdale Drive. But however God blesses you, we thank you for being a blessing to us. Amen. We're going to move on again. I want to say during this appreciation month of, of leadership and pastors and leaders all across the world, I want to thank you for this house. I want to thank God for 20 years of allowing me to serve you. And we thank God for that. Uh, we thank you for the for the good and we thank you for the tears and we thank you for the ups and the downs because it has made us who we are today amen amen uh, one of my good one of my good friends told me this a long time ago old theologian he said you won't learn how to pastor until you get a few scars on your back amen so I'm about to take some band-aids off because uh, I've lived some of it and I thank God for you amen but somebody ought to say the anointing is great when it comes to healing a man's soul. So we thank you so much for that. Um, I do want to bring to your attention, I announced this morning that something that is so dear to my heart as well as the church's heart is that we recognize the month of October as Breast Cancer Awareness. Amen. Uh, we, um, we know that uh, God is a healer and that God is a deliverer, but we love to celebrate for those who are survivors, amen, and we like to inform our neighbors and our friends of this, uh, this thing called cancer and how it has even taken some of our loved ones away from us. But this is not a time to be sad nor sorrowful, but we want to be aware of what's going on, amen. So we're going to ask you on the 24th, as we always do here at the church, we, we put something together to celebrate that moment. We usually have lunch and, and we want to let those who have survived and, and those who are going through and those who, are, are, who have had loved ones that passed on, we like to recognize all that. So this, this year is a little different. We will not be able to do those things. But from the hours of 10 to 12 on the 24th, y'all write that down. Look at it on our, on our advertising part of our church. From 10 to 12 on the 24th of October, we will have a drive-through celebration. That's right. I said a drive-through celebration. And it'll be things that they will be passing out. And we invite you to come. Like always, we invite you to join us on many of... Uh, broadcast of study get the word amen get the word get the word as much as you can but again we thank you so much for being a part this morning i have the pleasure of having a good friend of mine who has labored with me in the gospel for over um if i've been pastoring 20 years we've been laboring together for 22 years somewhere around there so i'm glad to have with me dr Leroy williams with me this morning 
a great, great uh, friend of mine, uh, 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 pastor, preacher, teacher. Uh, I think we even talked together um, a while back. Amen. Had the pleasure to teach in seminary together, so we thank God for him. Uh, he comes with a wealth of knowledge. Uh, we are bonded together in so many ways. But the one way that we know that we are bonded is in the blood of Jesus. Amen. That's what matters to us. So I, I have uh, his son with us with us this morning, Kalea and, and, and Kara, uh, who is in medical school, his daughter. And to Mildred, we thank you for loaning us your husband just for a little while. So as we always say here, y'all believe we still family, right? We still family. And as we say here every Sunday morning, we assemble ourselves here prayerfully with thanksgiving and praise, teaching and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ until he comes. We are a family who have been brought together by the blood of Christ, and nothing shall separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. God bless you all. Let's continue to have church, all right? And after y'all uh, give us y'all number one, number one, number one selection, we'll have a word, all right? God bless you all.
worship is for real. Say hallelujah. Say hallelujah. My worship is your testimony that your worship is for real whatever device you may be listening on can you just give him praise right where you are <laughs> knowing that he's real and that your worship is for real you might not know my pain but God is real how many know if it had not been for the Lord on our side, where would you be? I made up in my mind, regardless of where I am, I'm going to give him praise. He's been good, Papa Springs. When I look back down through my life, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't be here this morning. Amen. Can you just give him a praise wherever you are right now? For knowing this is the day that the Lord has made. How many going to rejoice and be glad in it? Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. It is indeed a privilege, my 
brothers and sisters, to be with you this morning, virtually or however it is where you may be listening to us. And thank God for this privilege and this opportunity to bring you a word from the Lord. But first and foremost, before we move forward, I want to thank God for Dr. Friedman, pastor of this great church. Come on, Papa Springs, at home, in your living room, your kitchen table, just give your pastor a praise to his wife, Sister Freeman, who's at home, and to Zedric, the first family. We thank you all for this privilege of being here, and I also want to take this time to give a shout out to this praise team, amen, these musicians, and I want to just thank the audio, the video, everybody that has anything to do with getting church today, doctor, because it takes all of you to make this happen. Thank y'all so much. I could have just left. You really didn't need me to preach. I was happy sitting over there listening to the praise scene. But I thank God for this great church and to all the leaders and to the associate ministers who may be here or who may be listening in. I greet you in the name of Jesus. You know, my Dr. Freeman had mentioned earlier about my wife. She's um, at home listening in and I have my road dog with me, my son Khalil, who's my armor barrier, who is with me, but my wife is at home, and as he said, my daughter, Minister Kira Williams, texts me on the way to church, and as he said, she's in Nashville in medical school, thank God, and she texts me, and she say, Dad, God got this. Now, when your daughter can tell you that, you know God is real. So we thank you for the prayers. And as I was studying and preparing for this word that the Lord laid on my heart, it's a familiar passage of scripture that we all probably know without even opening up your Bibles. But in a time like this, this is the word of God that he laid on my heart for us this morning. It's a familiar passage of scripture which is found in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Can I say that again? Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and 6, and I know you probably know it inside out, upside down. But this is what the Lord laid on my heart, reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. This is what thus says the Lord. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. Amen? I just want to talk briefly, as the Holy Spirit allows me, from this thought, navigating through personal problems. Let us pray. Father, we thank you so much for being our God, for one who's always in control of every aspect of our lives. And as we come this morning, I pray, oh God, that you feed me, that you feed us, that we can not only just be hearers of your word, but be doers also, Lord. And that we eat of it, that we digest it, that we make it a part of our being, that we can become that which you will have us to become. Speak to us now, Holy Spirit, through your word. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our heart be acceptable 
into thy sight. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Navigating through personal problems. My brothers and sisters, you all will agree with me that we are living in some trying times. The coronavirus pandemic has killed over 213,000 people. And the rate of deaths are increasing every day. We have chaos and confusion in our cities, in our states, countrywide. And if that is not enough, it's a high number of people every day who are losing their jobs and becoming unemployed. And if that's not enough for you, our public school systems are not the same anymore because of all the changes that are going on. Children are trying to learn in school buildings and out of school buildings. Parents are trying to teach schools, teach students by e-learning and different things. Our systems are changing. And then not only that, but my brothers and sisters, racial tension and Social injustices are running rampant. All you have to do is turn on your TV and you will see what I'm talking about when you see the killing of protesters and the killing of unarmed black men in the streets and the killing of a black woman who was just sleeping in her apartment. We are living in some trying and difficult times. And the fact of the matter is, Dr. Freeman, that people's personal lives are being affected. Yes, 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 yes. It's no, one, no one is exempt from the things that are going on in this world. Yes, I know we love the Lord. Yes, I know we believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. But he said, in this world, we're going to have trials and tribulations, but be of good cheer because I have overcome this world. And although we have this chaos and confusion and although we have all these troubles going on in our land, I come this morning with some good news. And the good news this morning is God is still in control. God knows everything that's going on. And you can believe that he is not pacing up and down heaven's quarter. Because he got the same world that's in chaos, he got it in his hand. The same one who spoke to this world is the same one that can bring this world back. And not only that, but he's going to work it out. How do you know that, preacher? How do you know that? Because this ain't God's first rodeo. I hope y'all get this. I hope you know this ain't God's time, first time of having a pandemic. This ain't God's first time having to play. Look, this might have caught us by surprise, but it didn't keep God by surprise. No, it didn't catch God. But the, pro the, the, the truth of the matter is God still controls well, let's look at our text and we can find out how we can navigate through this. In this text, these scriptures, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, is written by Solomon. Proverbs is a book of wisdom. Solomon, y'all know Solomon, the one that God says, Solomon, I give you whatever you ask. And Solomon didn't ask for riches. Solomon didn't ask for all the money in the world. Solomon didn't ask 
for all the big houses in the world. Solomon didn't ask for all the material things of the world. Solomon just said, God, give me wisdom to lead your people. How many know if anyone that lacks wisdom, all they got to do is ask of God, who will give it freely. Solomon said, yes, give me wisdom because godly wisdom will overtake worldly knowledge anytime. So here it is, he's writing these Proverbs, this book of wisdom, and this book of wisdom is a collection of collections that relates to a pattern of life. In other words, this book is an example of biblical wisdom literature. What are you saying, Dr. Williams? I'm saying it raises questions of value moral behavior, the right conduct, and even the meaning of human life. And what I come to find out about the book of Proverbs is the book of Proverbs could be a good devotional book because it has 31 chapters in it, which means that you can read one chapter of Proverbs each day of the month to get a full day of wisdom. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. And as I begin to meditate on those scriptures, preacher, the Lord showed me something. He brought to my mind navigating. And also navigation systems. Y'all follow me now. The GPS, everybody got one. In this 21st century, is something that all of us rely on now. In other words, GPS means global positioning system. That global positioning system was something that was created by the United States Department of Defense in 1973 for tracking and directing and guiding armed services. I'm going somewhere with this now. It's a global positioning system. And, and, and the thing is, the GPS system for the 21st century has gotten rid of all the paper maps. Y'all want to talk with me in there. What I'm saying is, before we go anywhere that we don't know where we're going, the first thing we're going to do is what? Put it in the GPS. Or even talk to the GPS. To get directions. Y'all follow me. For where we're going. And although that is the 21st century navigation system, God showed me for those of us who believe in him and have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, Proverbs 356 is a different navigation system. And the different navigation system for us is not God, it's not the global positioning system, but it's God's protective system. Y'all going to follow me? This is how we navigate through personal problems. This is how we persevere through pandemics and pain. This is how the believer gets through our personal problems through God's protected system. How, 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 my brothers and sisters, how, how do we navigate? Well, Solomon gives us instructions. The first thing that Solomon tells us we have to do to navigate through our personal problems is we must trust in the Lord. Let me pin that right there for a minute because I need to tell you 
that we put our trust in too many other things. Yeah, we're putting our trust in people until people fail us. We're putting our trust in the government until the government fails us. We put our trust into institutions until the institutions fail us. But we need to put our trust in the Lord. How do you know that, preacher? Well, I'm glad you asked that because the Bible, the Bible tells us in Psalm 28 and 7, this is what it says. It says right here that the Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusted in him and I am helped. Listen, my brothers and sisters, the first thing we got to do is trust in the Lord. And it blew my mind, Dr. Freeman, because we will trust a global positioning system to get us where we want to go. Even if we've never been there, we will trust in a GPS system. Listen to the voice of it that it tells us where to go. But why can't we trust God like we trust a GPS system? The Lord is more than a global positioning system. If we can put half the energy into trusting the Lord like we trust our devices, we can navigate through some stuff. We can get through some stuff. But the first thing we got to do to navigate through your personal problem is trust in the Lord. Because his word says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, then everything else will be added. We got that then clause wrong because we want to do everything else. We want to trust in everything else. And then when it fails, we want to see God. No, baby, go to God first. And he will lead you. But then not only... The Solomon tells us that we got to trust in the Lord. But the next thing he tells us is lean not to your own understanding. Let me stay there for a minute. We think we know everything. I'm finna say it again. I need that that felt good. I need to say that again. We think we know everything. In other words, we so smart, we can complicate a two-car funeral. But we, 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 he says, lean not to your own understanding. And the Lord showed me that, and he, and he took me right to Isaiah 58, 8, 55, 89, where he says this, For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts higher than your thoughts. In other words, our ways are not his ways. Can I say that again? Our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not our thoughts, his thoughts. In other words, I take a poll, whether you're on social media, I can take a poll where you're right here. How many can say some of my best thoughts got me in my worst troubles? All right, I can help you out. You saw him, you thought that was the one. You knew that was going to be your husband. You know, you even talking about the Lord told you, no, the Lord didn't tell you. You thought that until he showed you who he was and it blew your mind. You need to thank him for not giving you that thought. Or you thought she was the one. Oh, yes, he was saying those things to you, but then you found out it was another her. God shield you from that. How many know you glad that God did not give you some of the thoughts you had because he shielded you from it? So he said, look here. Stop thinking and start trusting. 
I know what you need. All you got to do is trust me. So in order to get through these personal problems, we got to learn to trust him first. Stop trying to figure it out ourselves and playing thoughts in our minds, but trust him. And then the third thing that Solomon tells us is acknowledge him. Now, I, I, I looked this thing up, Dr. Freeman, and I looked up the word acknowledge. And acknowledge means to admit the existence, reality, and trustworthiness of God. Watch this. I'm going to say that again. Acknowledge means to admit he exists, that he's real, and that he's trustworthy. In other words, acknowledging him means, God, I know you exist. Because every now and then I feel you in my soul. God, I know you're real because there's some things that should have taken me out. But it didn't. But God, not only that, but God, I know you're trustworthy because never have you failed me. And it says acknowledge him. This means to admit to God, I know you real. I know that you are true. And then when we can acknowledge him, guess what? We can ask him for whatever we need. Well, well, let me show you something. Like I said earlier, in the global positioning system, some of them are so voice activated, you ask them, give me directions. And then the directions will pull up on your device. How about going to God and say, God, when you're troubled, give me peace. How about when you're going through trials and tribulations, you can say, God, give me deliverance. How about when your body is raked in pain, you can say, God, give me a healing. How about when your money is funny and your change is strange, you can say, God, bless my finances. All you got to do is know that he exists and that he's real and that you can trust him because he said never have the righteous been forsaken or the seed begging for bread. Just acknowledge God and watch God do for you whatever you need done for you. All you got to do is ask. He says you ask not. You will not receive it. I looked up this word ask y'all didn't it? He says, watch this, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Then it says, knock, and it shall be opened up to you. And if you take those first three words of those things, it spells ask. Y'all missed that. A, ask, and it shall be given to you. S, seek and you shall find K, knock, and it shall be open to you. The reason why you can't navigate is because you asking the wrong people. You need to stop asking people and start asking God and watch God walk you out. I'm almost through. But Solomon, the wise one, tells us to trust in the Lord. He won't let us down. And stop trusting in yourself. He said acknowledge that he's with you. Because his presence is for real. And then lastly, he says, after doing that, let God direct you. Mm, this made me get happy in my spirit because he said let God direct you in other words Jeremiah 29 11 says he knows the plans he has for you plans to prosper and be in good health as your soul prospers in other words God already got your plan all he wants you to do is trust him all he wants you to do 
is depend on him. All he wants you to do is acknowledge him, not in some of your ways, but in all, all of your ways. And he will, I declare he will direct your path. I'm going home, y'all. I'm going to end this right now by telling you in the 21st century, the global positioning system, you have a receiver that's located in your phone or in your device. And once you give your phone or your device permission, it sends up a signal to a satellite. Watch this, y'all. That satellite is able to interpret your unique signal that's coming from your receiver. And based on that, the satellite can tell you where you are going and your position to other people and other obstacles. Good God Almighty. And once you plug in your destination, that global positioning system begins to guide you all the way to the end, to your final destination. Watch this though. It checks for detours, uh, take you around uh, obstacles uh, and directs you uh, on a path uh, to get you there as quickly and safely as possible. Uh, watch this doctor. And you know what? Uh, the system speaks to you the entire way in other words it may be silent in some moments but the directions are still there God may be quiet but he's still there he hadn't gone nowhere that is first century global positioning system but in God's God's protected system God is our satellite the Holy Spirit is our receiver that lives in our device which is the temple of God once we give the receiver who's the Holy Spirit permission it sends up a signal watch this the Holy Spirit that's in us sends up a signal to the Father who is the satellite and the Father is able to interpret your signal, your signal, your signal, your signal, my signal, all at the same time. And he starts us on our way, protecting us, guiding us, taking us around obstacles, taking out details, he may be silent in the moment, but he never, y'all don't hear me, he never goes away. He keeps on guiding. He keeps on protecting because our final destination has already Jesus, some 
2,000 years ago on a hill called Calvary wrote to our final destination. He died for our final destinations. He was buried for our final destination. He rose for our final destination. Heaven is already in the GPS. Heaven is waiting on us. In this life, gonna have trouble. But trust God, he already worked it out. Don't worry, trust God. God, he got it. You can trust him. You can depend on him. Your destination has already been worked out. Don't worry about this. God got it. Don't you doubt God. Never have the righteous been forsaken, nor the seed begging for bread. Who you gonna trust? The global positioning system or God's protective system. God bless you. Come on, let us stand as we get ready to depart. We thank God for Dr. Roy. Come on, somebody. Come on, come on, come on. We thank God. We thank God for the word. We thank God for you. But watch this. He said something that was so prophetic and profound that God is waiting to direct us. Amen. And sometimes if you're like your pastor here, sometimes even with the GPS, you don't listen and you go another direction. Amen. But I love this word that mine said. It says rerouting your Come on, destination. And somebody ought to say, I've messed up. I've messed up. Can I say that again? I've messed up. But I thank God for the GP. So I'm rerouting your destination. I don't know where you are right now. But somebody ought to say, I thank God rerouted me. Amen. And that same Jesus that we speak of, that same Jesus we preach of, he's here. Look here, don't let the world tell you that you got to beg and borrow to be forgiven. All you got to do is ask. Because the word of God says, and he shall cast your sins as far as the east is to the west. That's the promise. I tell people all the time, it's not hard to be a believer. It's not hard being a Christian. We begin to put up the preliminaries and the boundaries and, the, and everything. And I got to, look, be yourself and let God work it out. Somebody said, what are you saying, Freeman? I fell last night. That was last night. Get on up. I messed up on Wednesday. Get on up. Grace and mercy has paid the price. So wherever you are, wherever you are, I want us to stretch our hands and Maybe you desire to be a part of a church family. Maybe you're asking the question, what must I do to be saved? I want to tell you to admit, believe, and confess, and know that God is able. And if you desire to be a part of this church family, we invite you. In this period of pandemic, we still invite you. Reach out to us, and you are able. And again, we thank you for your giving, and we thank you for your love. Father God, we thank you right now. We thank you for the preached word. We thank you for everyone who has assembled around their various devices and those who have come to the church house to help bring forth the word. Now, God, we ask that you act, we ask that this word will go forth and that you will touch a tender heart, that, that Lord, that you will regulate a mind, that God, that you would help someone who is hurting. God, we believe right now that, that you're still the God that is able. And Lord, maybe someone's crying out this morning, what must I do to be saved? Let them know that the rich royal blood of Jesus came streaming down to, to wash us of our sins. Let us continue to walk by faith and not by sight. And whoever, Lord, 
whoever, so let them come. Let them come. Let them get personal. Let them get intimate with you. And we thank you, Lord. We thank you. Now, Lord, as we leave this place, we ask that we're never separated from thy presence. May your love, your peace, and your grace, may it rest, rule, and abide with us, hence, now, and forevermore. Amen. As the praise minister sang, God bless you all. God bless you all. It's something about that name. Come on.